Hey guys, happy Friday. Mm, I hate Friday. I honestly, I really honestly hate Fridays. So, okay, so yesterday we find out that Hecate or Hecate is actually in the Bible and she had a lot to say. So we are actually going to go on with that. And it's just, I mean, I find it really strange that she was actually in the Bible at that time. So, I mean, it's really interesting, but so the section of Proverbs, Proverbs, known as the Proverbs of Solomon, reinforces wisdom's gender. So this is a really interesting right here. Now, quote, wisdom reposes in the heart of the discerning, and even among fools, she lets herself be known. So that's interesting. That's Hecate. And I cannot believe that it, we are finding, you know, praises to her in the Bible which, I mean, there's got to be some kind of, you know, trick or a trap somewhere. I mean, obviously, because it's the Bible. It's, you know, you're being set up for complete failure by a God that doesn't exist. But Proverbs also states that wisdom with her Aphrodisian symbol of the dove was God's first creation. And ever since, as the Shekinah in Pate's words, she had been God's playmate. Seemingly a tinkerbell. Sick. It's sick. Um, like creature of darting intelligent light. So the Shekinah or Shekinah was believed to possess a mind of her own, which she never hesitated to use in performing her function of influencing even opposing God. Clearly a feisty being capable of being tough with Yahweh had no very rose or rosy future. All right, so what is, what's God's first creation? Was it was it Adam, Eve, or was it the dove? What, see, it's just too controversial. None of it makes sense. None of it adds up. None of it even, you know, it's just a book of crap, literally. Now, so now as Pate says, or notes, from about 400 BC to 1100 CE, the God of Judaism was a lone and lofty father figure and whatever female divinity was allowed to exist in his shadow, typical, typical male crap, was either relegated to a lower plane of her femininity, was masked and reduced to a, um, a grammatical, wait, what is that word? Grammatical? Grammatical, grammatical gender, oh my God. So um, as in the case of the Shekinah, so, what did God really create? <laughs> I mean, oh my God, this is just ridiculous. Now, to light Christ for comfort. This is interesting too. Now, with the spread of Christianity, the old gods, both male and female of the Mediterranean and the Middle East, were rapidly and um, hysterically denoted to the ranks of what? Demons, of course. So often because their, le their legends were too similar to Jesus's story for com comfort. In every faith and every religion, there is a dying, uh, a dying and a rising God. So it's, yeah. Now the dying and rising God, uh, Tammuz, whose consort, which Ishtar Mari, had uh, actually reached Jerusalem via Babylon. And before that, a summer as son of the blood or only begotten son as a dying rising god with a major wit or major cult centered in Jerusalem. Now, um, Tammuz is believed by some to be one of the um, prototypes of Christ. His cradle was made from a grain, a grain basket, similar to Jesus's manger, for example. So we got a little, I mean, you know, and, and the, star, the whole thing with the Star of Bethlehem, They've already proven that scientifically and astronomically, astrologically and astro or no astronomically, yeah, astronomy, that that never could have happened. It was not possible in that time period for that light to actually guide those the the, the magi, you know, to Bethlehem. There's no you know no star whatsoever. So it's scientifically proven, archaeologically proven as well. So I mean, we just don't have anything really solid. You know, we don't have anything solid for the Bible. It is not really based on much of anything besides you know, just a collection of crazy, some of them are really stupid stories. So, I mean, we don't have much to go on. 
with that. And then, you know, in turn this, you know, for me and in, in you know, the book writing process, I'm like, okay, so I'm on my chapter. Well, not in a chapter, but I mean, spirit friendships and deity friendships. So how can one be a Christian and put their faith in Jesus, only Jesus, but then take and work with the pagan deities of old? Now, who's going to be more upset? I mean, since Christianity has absorbed and Catholicism did absorb it, basically everything pagan and then twisted it and demonized it and then came up with their own ways of doing things. So how can, how can a Christian that, is, that has undying faith in Jesus, it's, Jesus is their savior, so on and so forth, how can they work with and come into a different tradition and want to work with a goddess or a different god but, you know, completely respectably, um, you know, but, you know, not giving the, you know, utter faith that you would put in Jesus. So to me, I mean, personally, no, uh, it wouldn't work like at all. Yeah, I, so I'm confused with that. I mean, I just I'm trying to wrap my, my brain around the whole process of, you know, dual faithism um, because, you know, traditional craft in Cornwall is very dual faith. Um, so there's no problem with you know traditional which is borrowing but what about christians because if you're a christian you go by the bible you don't honor any other gods you don't honor any you know you don't have graven images which every church has a graven image i mean so what is really going on here i mean who is who who is actually serving who i honestly think that the christians right now are serving forms of the old gods in the new guises, so of the saints and of Jesus. So, I mean, literally, I don't think there was a Jesus. I don't, uh, personally, no. I think it's ridiculous and it's absurd. And it's, you know, it's just basically a, uh, a giant, uh, you know, downfall for, you know, for us, for the old crafters. So, I mean, literally for me, that would in turn tell me that the Christians, you know, and the Catholics and the Baptists and the, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses or whatever you want to call them, there's so many different sects of it that they would be actually worshiping in turn the old gods. So if Christianity took all of our gods and goddesses and turned them into saints or, um, you know, say Jesus, the prototypes for Jesus with the dying and rising gods, and then the resurrection of those gods, you know, shortly after we have, yeah, I, I honestly think that Christianity is, you know, diluted the people of Christianity, um, whether they want to believe it or not, are completely brainwashed. And they think that they're worshiping this, you know, all powerful and loving God. But in fact, they are actually worshiping. So if you worship Jehovah, you're worshiping Set. So that would be, you know, um, the destroyer God in um, ancient Egyptian mythology and religion. So that would be, you know, kind of, you know, tied into with the, you know, with the whole concept of Satan. Um, and, you know, the, the wickedness of that God. So I honestly think that the Christians are worshiping literally their own creation, which is Satan, not the devil. So that's kind of what I think, but I don't know. So I, I, I have never, you know, I don't, I don't know what to say to people, you know, that want to work with other gods and goddesses when, you know, this is my path and I'm very passionate about my path. Uh, you know, I'm very, um, I'm very outspoken, you know, against, you know, the new age spiritualists. Uh, the new age spirituality and you know this manifestation crap and you know these new age gurus which it, it really i mean honestly what these gurus are doing are you know just taking bits and pieces of, of the old craft and you know the old ways and old religions and they're bringing it into a modern context and they're reconstructing it so that i mean that is a bad thing right there we don't need to reconstruct something that has already happened in the past it happened in the past it's in the past for a reason but we do carry on tenets of traditional faith within traditional craft to the present day so you know it's very again it's very regional so it's going to differ but i mean still it's the same concept you know you can't say you know i'm manifesting this no you're not you're using old good old-fashioned witch craft and that's a fact but I mean, I don't know what to tell people anymore about this concept of, you know, coming into, you know, like wanting to work with a different goddess, but, you know, not believing in, you know, the, you know, praying to the Virgin Mary. So why would you, that's very controversial right there. So I think personally, if you're a Christian, you must stay within your Christian lim limits, the, the dogmatic way of thinking. So, I mean, there's no room. You know, I mean, it's in the Bible. God says there's no room for any other gods but, but him. So, I mean, to me and most personal, I mean, most witches, I would definitely say, yeah, um, 
it would be a no. Um, I don't know how the, the gods of old would react. I personally find it offensive. I really do. Um, you know, using manifestation in, in a place of, you know, spell casting and magic and, you know, witchcraft, because that's what it is. It's honestly what it is. So all these new age coaches and, you know, manifestors or, you know, manifestation coaches and techniques and all that chumbo mumbo crap, it's all new, but it's taken from the old, but it's reconstructed. So it's totally just, I mean, it doesn't even make any sense. So that's the reason that many people, you know, the, the people, you're not going to get what you want with manifestation. It's, you know, it, it's the pyramid scheme. And if you guys don't know what a pyramid scheme is, oh God, you're going to freak out when you read my, my, my book. Um, that is definitely in there. So that's included in there. And, you know, it's just, I just, I wish people would just stay with their own faiths and not, you know, complicate and confuse me with these questions because I don't have the answers for them. You know, evidently something's lacking within that person's faith with Jesus and the Christian religion. If they're being, you know, compelled or drawn to another goddess or God, you know, or spirit guides or tarot or, you know, anything like that, anything of the sorts, you know, any kind of magic, any kind of witchcraft, any kind of the occult, the paranormal, the ghosts, uh, you know, EVPs, all of that is against God. Um, everything that, you know, it's all against God. So I don't understand. I really don't. It's hard. It's really hard to wrap my brain around that. So what do you guys think? What do you guys think? I really, really like to know. I just, I don't get it. So please tell me, inform me, enlighten me. Please, you guys. I am like, I'm at a loss. I am really honestly stuck on that section of the book, uh, Spirit, Friendships, and Deities. I don't really honestly, in my personal opinion, I don't see a problem. I mean, I do, but I mean, I don't see a problem if you come at, you know, very respectfully, you know, you give the proper offerings and, you know, so on and so forth. But the faith is not there. That um, putting your faith in that deity is not there. So I don't think it's going to, you know, fully work. It's either not going to work or it's going to work. And I don't think it's going to, it, there's no middle ground. I don't think it's going to work at all. Um, because, you know, there, look at YouTube, look at on YouTube, the Bible and manifestation. Yeah, you're supposed to not even touch on that. You're supposed to let Jesus manifest all of this for you and let God do what he wants to do for you. So it's very different. I don't get it at all. But all right, guys, um, don't forget this Sunday at uh, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, my time. Um, hold on. I don't know where I'm going to be. I, I'm so confused and I am so lost in, in what I'm doing anymore. Um, okay. So I will be, ah, uh, this is ridiculous. You guys, I'm so sorry. All right. Trevor. Hello. Hello. Thank you for um, having me as a guest on your podcast. So this will be from, this will be on um, the Haunting Live podcast for sun, Sunday, November 21st. So it will be, um, yeah, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on uh, YouTube Live. So it'll be on, yes, um, Haunting Live podcast. So that's where that will be. Now I have another offer for you guys. If you guys click the link below, it will take you to spirit willow studio and you will get let me see you're gonna get from me with my name r-y-a-n e-s-p-i-c-h all cap box you're gonna get 20 percent off your purchase from spiritwillowstudio.com and it's a, they're amazing products. I mean, the beautiful jewelry that you can actually use and wear and it's not gonna break on you and it's just beautiful. It really is. So um, I will link that below for you guys. And I hope you guys enjoy their new, uh, just all of their stuff is incredibly crafted. I mean, it's beautiful. It looks like something straight out of a witch's cottage, literally like with what's behind me, with what's going on, it just, it all fits in and it's beautiful. I mean, oh my God, I can't wait to literally spend money on this website. <laughs> so you guys know I love my jewelry. So of course I'm going to, but so yes, yeah, so that's what's going on this weekend a lot. So I hope you guys have a good day, a good weekend, hopefully. Let me know what you guys think about the whole, you know, you know, being a Christian and all that and coming to paganism and, you know, wanting to, you know, yeah, work with the deities and all that stuff. So I'm not, I don't, don't know, but. 
I love you guys all the way from always. It's always going to be Venus, always. Oh, wow, it's kind of shining. That's kind of cool. All the way back down. So, yeah, um, let me know what you guys think. And have a good weekend, guys. Stay safe, stay healthy, all that good stuff. And, yeah, I love you all very much. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.